I'm going to ask you the same okay. question. So I want you to think, like, what is one piece of stationery that blew your minds when you came here? Welcome to this channel. このチャンネルでは英語を学ぶだけではなくネイティブの感覚を身につける動画をお届けしておりますので今回の動画は長めのネイティブ同士の会話を字幕付きでお届けしたいと思いますいつも通りに僕とアメリカ人の友達のオーセンとの対談になるんですが今回の話題は日本の文房具とアメリカの文房具の違いについてでしたえ文房具なんで、まあ、実を言うとですね日本とアメリカの文房具の違いでお互いのその日本とアメリカの文化の違いにあの気づくことが多いと思いますとても刺激的な会話になりましたでいつも通りにですねあなたのリスニングと理解度を確かめるために日本語と英語の字幕が両方ついていますのでぜひご利用くださいちなみにですね、今回の動画は、まあ、いつも通りなんですけど、もともと The Austin and Arthur Show という別のチャンネルで放送されたものですね。で、そのチャンネルでは字幕がないから、ちょっとハードルが高いかもしれないんですけど、いろんな話が聞きたい、英語をじっくり聞きたい方はぜひ The Austin and Arthur Show をご確認ください。で、まあ、これからもですね、まあ、大体月に2回ぐらい、あの、オーセンとの対談が入るんですけど、今後、オーセンとアーティーに聞きたい話とか、まあ、話してほしいことがあれば、ぜひコメント欄でシェアしてください。And thanks so much for watching. Let's get started. All right, cheers, man. Cheers. Mm -hmm. So, this is super sweet. Yeah. I, th I think this is probably、um, one of the sweetest sakes I've ever had. Yeah. You know, actually, so I've gotten this one before, but our、yeah. friend Tomoko actually bought this for us、yeah. this time. Thank you, Tomoko. I, yeah. I don't, does Tomoko watch our videos? I hope so. If、yeah. she doesn't, she helps out, but、yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if she watches. Yeah, because、like, I, 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 don't, I don't know if、like、our little editing crew like, actually. Oh, Yuta watches our videos, surely, yeah. right? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Hey, Yuta, thanks for all your help. You're awesome. Yeah.、Um, but people don't know who we're talking about. Anyways,、so、what were we going to talk about today? <laughs>、uh, stationaries. Stationary. Yeah. Stationaries or stationary? stationary? I don't know. Do you put an S on it? No, you don't.、Okay. I guess it's like English a, teacher. Yeah, that's fair. It's an uncountable noun. Yeah. All right.、Uh, how, how many stationaries do you have? I just have a bunch of stationary. Okay. Oh, man. Okay. All right. Let's just end right. this episode right me, now. Rake just, me over the coals. Just, I surrender, you're, sir. <laughs> you're out, man. I'm going to get you fired. The amount, of, the amount of crap that I get for like messing up English, and then people will be like, but you're an English teacher. It's like, all right. All right. I'm going to go to your chosen profession. I'm going to wait for you to make a mistake. I'm going to wait. <laughs> okay. I'm going to call you out on it. Please don't. You'll find everything. <laughs> but can you talk about the ring on your ring? On your Point、okay, finger. So, so there's a story with this. First of all,、uh, you can't really see it from the camera. Just, just but pretend like you're punching the camera lens. If any of you are a Lord of the Rings fan, this is the Ring of Power from Lord of the Rings. Yeah. It's got the little Elvish written on it. Yeah.、Uh, I I mean, I'm a really big Lord of the Rings fan. I,、okay. I love Lord of the Rings.、Um, you're so white. Yeah. If,、uh, if you guys like fantasy、um, yeah. and you want to learn about,、uh, I would say it's like a really good. Kind of like mirror into Western culture, Lord、mm -hmm. of the Rings. Yeah. Because、um, J.R.R. Tolkien grew up in the 1900s、yeah. and,、uh, you know, he fought in World War I.、Mm -hmm. And a lot of like the story of Lord of the Rings and like the cultures in it are kind of based off like、mm -hmm. European culture、mm -hmm. um, and British culture, obviously.、Um, anyways. Yeah.、Uh, so I wanted to buy a ring.、Mm -hmm. um, so I spent, I didn't spend a lot of money on my, on my wedding ring. Mm hmm. Um, but I was recently、um, informed by my sister when、mm -hmm. we were in America that you can buy rings off Amazon for like $30. Okay. Right? And they're these tungsten rings.、Mm -hmm. So that's what this is.、It's、oh, it's、like、a tungsten a, ring. It's a tungsten ring that's coated in like a gold coating.、Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right?、Um, and so, like, I was frustrated because, like, I spent money, a lot of money on my wedding ring when、yeah. I could have just bought rings on Amazon for $30. Yeah. Bucks. Yeah. And, like, my wife, it's like, I, I'm so glad, like, my wife and I are just、mm -hmm. like always on the same level. Yeah. She's like, Yeah, we wasted money there. We、yeah. could have just bought cheap rings. I'm、yeah. like, Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, Well, you know, when we got back to Japan, I was like, You know what? 
let's just buy some rings now. Okay. Like, since that's a thing that we can apparently do. Yeah. So um, I bought her a ring and then mm-hmm. um, I was looking at wedding rings and I was okay. like, I'd like the ring of power <laughs> as, as my wedding ring. The ring of power. Um, Wait, and, so you, you did, but you didn't get that at your wedding though. No. No. Okay. But it's just I after who cares? Post wedding wedding, wedding, wedding ring. A wedding ring's a wedding ring as far as I'm okay, concerned. Okay, post wedding wedding ring. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Um, but yeah, so so like uh I I bought this mm-hmm. ring and I was really excited for it. Um but then uh I bought it in the wrong size. Okay. So hence why I'm wearing it on my index finger. Okay. Um because it, it actually just it like it completely yeah, yeah, I see that. I see you know that it's what covering I mean? it just, the... it's, this is like loose on, yeah. on my ring finger. Okay. But then I rewatched the Lord of the Rings and yeah. it turns out Sauron, like the main bad guy, like wears it on his finger. Oh really? Right there. On so his now I finger? feel cool. Okay, because so like... you're like Sauron the bad guy. Yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. The eye. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Um so that's why I have a gold ring on okay. on my on my finger. Okay. And cool. it's been fun. I've I've just like kind of embraced it. Yeah. So you know, it's funny because I actually had a ring of power too when I was in middle school when the movies first came out. Oh, really? But I got it because I actually bought it as a leather bookmark and it had like a, it had a ring attached to it by like a small like rope or something like that. Yeah. And I just was like, hey, I like the ring more than the bookmark. So I just took it off and I started wearing it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But that, uh, that, that brings us back to the stationary topic. So yeah. I want to know why would you want to why would you think talking about stationery is a good idea? So the reason why is like I think I think we need to like honestly we'll we'll take stationery and I want to stay on this topic but I want to kind of expand it a little bit mm-hmm. to like dollar stores dollar in stores, Japan. Okay. okay. Um and obviously they're not called dollar stores here they're called 100 yen stores or yeah. more specifically Hyukin or uh the brand Daiso. Yeah, right. And uh, Daiso has actually opened up stores in the US. Yeah, like, yeah. Um I don't know other states but I know if you go to Seattle like it's yeah. not uncommon to see them. The first Daiso I went to was in J- was in Seattle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. And so uh what these places are is they're actually these really incredible stores that you go in and to be fair, not everything costs 100 yen. Yeah. Um, you'll see some stuff that can go all the way up to like 600 yen. Okay. But the idea is like pretty much every there or everything there is under 1,000 yeah. yen. Right? That's that's like guaranteed mm-hmm. if you go in. But you can find some incredible stuff. You can find shelving. You mm-hmm. can find like painting supplies, fishing yeah. stuff, groceries, yeah. like pretty much anything you can think of. Like electronics, they sell mm-hmm. like electronic headphones that are like actually not terrible yeah and mm. so it's like pretty amazing what you can get for, for yeah that. for the for the price you actually get pretty good quality yeah i was surprised too um but by far the largest section in the store in fact i would say probably like half of the store mm-hmm. is devoted to the stationary section yeah, yeah that's right true. and japan goes hard mm-hmm. when it, it it like when it comes to stationary yeah. Yeah. you know what i mean like, there are so, like, I, I remember, you. I'm going to ask you the same okay. question. So, I want you to think, like, what is one piece of stationery that blew your minds when you came here? Can you think of any? Because I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what mine was. Yeah, so you for tell me, me first. I have gone my entire life of using a stapler mm-hmm. and using the metal staples. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I came here to Japan and they got some weird contraption that does some like origami stuff. Yeah. And it, it folds the paper over. It folds the paper over so you don't have to use metal paper clips. Yeah, How that's insane amazing. is that? Okay. It's so cool. Like I I I, I just feel like it, it looks cool first, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. But like also like it's cool cuz you you kind of get that little bump up cuz yeah. you're like, huh, "Look, I'm being nice for the environment." Yeah, I'm being I'm eco-friendly. Using... <laughs> you know, it is yeah. just like, "Man, why are we using metal staples when yeah. this exists? Yeah. Like, it, it was just so cool to me. I, so that was, like, my first experience mm-hmm. just being blown away. Yeah. Um, I, th- I think for me, like, the, the stationery, I wasn't necessarily blown away by a piece of stationery, but I was blown away at the amount of, like, handwritten letters and notes that people give to each other. Yeah. Because, like, in the States, you really don't have a culture of that, you know? Mm. Like, I remember when... um. When I left, uh, when I did my homestay in Osaka, right, mm-hmm. and I I left, and my um my host mom, 
on the day that I left, she gave me a letter, but mm. it wasn't like like an A4, you know, sheet of paper, or whatever. It was literally like like one third of the size, so that you didn't have to fold it over. But it was just a bunch of slips, and she wrote like like four of those where it's yeah. just like a message on them. Yeah, and it was like it was almost like. It was like a little rectangular slip, you know? And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, you know, if it was someone else, they would have written it in a card or something. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's the thing that I thought was interesting is in the States, like, people always, like, if you get a piece of stationery, normally it's like a card, you put it yeah. in an envelope. But here it's like a piece of paper, like a letter, letter kind yeah. of thing. You know? Well, something else that I find interesting, and I'm going to ask you this because I'm actually curious if it's just my family who does this or if this is just mm-hmm. the thing people do in the US. But, like, when you're getting somebody a card, mm-hmm. let's say it's their birthday, yeah. right? When you're getting something or someone a card, you go to like Hallmark yeah. or, you know, whatever stationery mm-hmm. store, right? And you buy the card. You are you don't really write the letter. Yeah. You just like, you're choosing a card that like, mm-hmm. so the cards will have stuff written in them already, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, like a message. It'll be like printed in it. And so you spend time looking for a message that kind of matches the mm-hmm. feeling of like what you want to say. Mm-hmm. And then you usually just like sign your name, like, mm-hmm. oh, happy birthday, love, mm-hmm. you know, Austin. Yeah. You know, and that's it. Yeah. And here in Japan, like, I don't think I've ever seen that. Yeah, you haven't, but they're very, very limited. It's yeah. always like blank cards mm-hmm. or it's like an empty letter that you can like piece of stationery that you can write an actual yeah. letter in. It's much more. Yeah. You have to come up with the idea yourself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I, I feel like it's it's used. Um, like there's so much more accessories to letters here. Yeah. Uh, like you know what a perfect example, man, mm-hmm. is back during my wedding mm-hmm. when I was getting the uh, what's it called, the money from people. Yeah. Um, you remember Okoshugi? The- yes, yes, yes. So basically, that's like wedding money. Like mm-hmm. everyone gives you money for getting married. Um, and the the wrapping on all of mm-hmm. them is like really elaborate. Yeah. Right. So it's like you'll have the money in here, right? Mm-hmm. And then it gets like folded three times on mm-hmm. a paper. And then inside that, there's usually like a message or something mm-hmm. from the person. Yeah. And then inside, or sorry, and then that itself is wrapped three mm-hmm. times in paper and then like wrapped in mm-hmm. this like... Like a bow or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's like, that's so elaborate for basically what's just a letter mm-hmm. saying, congratulations, some cash. here's some money. Yeah, like it, it's funny because, you know, in the in the States where I think of stationery, you know, like we said, people don't really write letters. yeah. And they'll get a card. And a lot of times, you only really send cards on the holidays um, or someone's birthday. So like Nengajo stuff, you know, like a New Year's card or something. You know, it, that, that's something that's interesting too. So like, <clears throat> so we're, this kind of like goes into using stationery, but like the New Year's card or, is different from the Christmas cards in the States. Like, do you, do you, so I don't know about you, but I know in my family every year around Christmas time, because Christmas time is a big holiday. Yeah. We get postcards from a bunch of people we know, and it's all like pictures of their family. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. I that, I feel like that's a deep-rooted American tradition. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, hey, this is our family this year. Yeah. Let me and, show you a picture. And it's it's usually, there's usually a kind of joke in the, in the picture where it's like everyone has like ugly Christmas sweaters yeah. or there's like a theme or something. Yeah. yeah, and whereas like in Japan, like the the New Year's cards are just like, hey, happy New Year. There's no picture on this. I'm just writing you a message. Yeah. You know, and... It's funny how you have that difference, but I feel like, you know, in the in the States, like you said, you know, there's like a theme or like a gag or a joke. And I feel like there are lots of most of the greeting cards that I picked because I, I almost never write letters to people, but I would get cards. They're always like based on a joke. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Whereas like in Japan, I feel like people write on stationery. They write more heartfelt messages. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. You know, like the... Uh, w- textbook one i can think of yeah. is like you know somebody turns 40 mm-hmm. and you'll get a card be like hey you're nearly dead yeah like, right that kind of right. thing yeah <laughs> it's like you know it, it, there's some kind of like dark humor or mm. like you know joke that like yeah is, is not very serious but yeah that's yeah, it's a lot more yeah heartfelt or mm-hmm. i don't want to say serious but like sincere yeah maybe more sincere more yeah. more thought out i think yeah more thought out so so why do you think it is that um in the states the Hallmark greeting cards kind of took off, whereas in Japan, it's more like heartfelt writing. I think 
I mean, I, I, I've got a couple reasons okay. why I think that, but I think the main thing is like one of the real trademarks of America. And I, I don't know how to make this sound mm-hmm. not negative, but so I'm just going to throw it out. But I think one of the hallmark traits, mm. hallmark traits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even catch on to that. Uh, one of the traits that American culture has is we kind of just like willingly throw out our cultural soul yeah to make things more convenient okay yeah you know what i mean so it's like uh you know walmart Mm -hmm. and like these big shopping things kind of replaced like small shops Mm -hmm. in america Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and then amazon's replaced that yeah right amazon's replaced everything now Mm -hmm. and it's like i I think we'll eventually get into a future where it's like you just buy everything from Mm -hmm. amazon or whatever you know um but it's just like well people for the sake of saving time and mm-hmm. effort they'll just be like yeah i don't need to write this letter mm-hmm. i'm just gonna mm-hmm. go to the store and hey this says about what i want to mm-hmm. say this is funny they'll mm-hmm. laugh about mm-hmm. this and then they just buy it mm-hmm. um and i don't think it's i don't i don't think it's like <clears throat> necessarily like uh a negative thing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right because for me personally like i i'm just not somebody who gets moved by letters yeah so like, you know, like on, on that matter, it's like, I, I don't really care all that mm-hmm. much if I just, if I get something, it's like, yeah. for me, that's like the act of getting something. Yeah. It's like, I got a, I got a letter from this person. Mm-hmm. It's like, I don't care if they hand wrote it or if they printed it out, but now I keep all the letters people Do you? give me. I've kept all my letters over the past like 15 years. Wow. Yeah. I think because th- <clears throat> there's, there's five of them. No, I'm just kidding. There's, more. there's. There's three things that I've kept over the years. Yeah. And all of them are from my nieces. Actually. Yeah, right? <clears throat> that so, makes sense, you know. Uh, yeah, Chelsea's actually probably mm-hmm. going to get really excited when I mention this now. Okay. I'm not doing this to earn brownie points, Chelsea. <laughs> um, but uh, I think it was, it was it last time. It was not this last time, but the time before that, um, I, went, I went back to the mm-hmm. U.S. And my nieces both drew pictures. Okay. Because they were happy to see me. And so, um, yeah, they're just, <laughs> I can't throw those away. Yeah, they're you can't cute, throw those you know? away, man. Um, so, yeah, I, those are hanging up on my wall in my okay. apartment still, and they've been up there for a couple of years now. Okay. But th- those that's, like, the only thing I've ever kept. Okay. Yeah. Like, it, my, I, I even, I wrote, I used to write these heartfelt messages when I was in boot camp. Okay. And going through, like, training mm-hmm. in the Marines. And, like... I feel bad because my mom kept all those messages, like the letters that I wrote, but all the ones that I got from my family and everything just threw out when I got out of boot camp. It's like, uh, (laughs) yeah, I, you know, I, I feel like, well, speaking about that, right. So I feel like, um, as like different cultures, I feel like people in the West, especially like in, in the States and Europe, whatever, I mean, that is the West, but, um, well, let, let's say this. I feel like in Japan, people value the written word more than we do. And that could have been because, I mean, they did have printing back then, but everything was handwritten up until the late 1800s, mm-hmm. pretty much. And in, you know, in, in Europe, Gutenberg invented the printing press in the 1500s, and that kind of democratized education and knowledge and people have been printing on things for hundreds of years so it's almost like you have this pre-made item with print it's not it's not necessarily formed by a human hand but it's just like a machine made it yeah and so we're much more used to that whereas like up until 150 years ago it was really like everything you got was handwritten and also i feel like in J- in japan too people um people judge you by your handwriting like I remember. Oh my God, man! We could talk about yeah, this. I want to hear your story, yeah. though. No, I just remember. So, um, my my first Japanese tutor, who actually I did the homestay at her house in yeah. Osaka, she's amazing, changed my life. Um, and uh, she told me when I was practicing writing, she's like, Arthur, you need to learn to write well. Mm-hmm. I was like, why? She's like, because people will think you're a bad person if you don't. And I was like, oh crap and so yeah. so when she was teaching me my, my handwriting was really good and now it's gone really bad yeah yeah <laughs> so uh teachers yeah especially japanese english teachers are very very harsh on bad handwriting yeah 
Um, so I have bad handwriting, and I blame it on being left-handed because mm-hmm. I've never met a left-handed person that's good at like writing. Mm-hmm. Um, I could probably have tried more in in school to like improve, mm-hmm. and I could probably try now, but I just can't be asked. Yeah, yeah. Now. But um, so I'll be writing on the board, and uh, a characteristic that left-handed people tend mm-hmm. to have is the sentences will kind of like dip down. Okay. Um, which apparently if you're right-handed, they it's, go up. it's easier. Yeah. Yeah. It, it goes like this, yeah, right? Yeah. But it, it, with your, if you're left-handed, it goes down. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like I'll be writing on the whiteboard and my, my sentences will go down like mm-hmm. that. Um, and the way, like the way that I write, uh, especially my numbers mm-hmm. is like kind of like shorthand writing okay. where it's just like seven will just be like. It'll yeah. kind of look like ooh. Yeah, like ooh. Yeah, 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 right, right. Right? Um, and then uh, a real bad habit that I have is uh, when I'm writing, mm-hmm. uh, usually I write my S's and my T's in uppercase. Okay. Especially S's. Like, I almost always write my S's Even in uppercase. Even if it's in the middle of a word? Yes. Why? It's just a habit that I have. Okay. Um. And I get raked over the coals constantly yeah. from like, if, if another teacher sees my like handwriting, if they're like mm-hmm. walking by, they'll like pull me aside after, after my class and be like, Austin, your S's are not supposed to look like that. Yeah. Right. And it's like, who cares? Mm-hmm. No one cares. Mm-hmm. And they're like, no, 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 no. If they write this in an entrance exam essay and it's like, I'm not changing okay okay <laughs> but but I, I i get constantly called out for it yeah um well it goes into even like the resumes that people write yeah. for job hunting right yeah. that's all handwritten could you imagine that i would never get a job if i had to no well, i didn't get a job anyways but <laughs> <laughs> well maybe that's why <laughs> <laughs> yeah but but yeah so i guess like i guess there's this huge value put on like the written word yeah and that's why much. letter writing is much yeah. more big here and i mean it makes sense right you think of like how strict writing uh like what the heck all right something just fell out of your beard <laughs> <laughs> oh it scared the crap out of me. it must be uh that, that's my it's snack in- for later right? <laughs> i usually just keep my snacks up here <laughs> Gross, man. oh anyways uh, okay. um <laughs> sorry we're that's definitely a keep, joke by the way i'm not a dirty human being we're definitely keeping that in the video <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> I just lost my train of thought. Uh, what were we talking we were, about? We were talking about, um, so Jap- Japan puts more value on the written word. And um, we got back to that topic and you were going to take it down another path. And then some crap came out of your beard. <laughs> I still see there's a little bit of crap still in your beard, actually, at the, really? near, near the bottom. Near the bottom. I don't want to touch it. So, Oh, man. It's about to fall out. Some more just fell out. <laughs> God, dude, I, we Guys. need to cut this part out. <laughs> <laughs> I know your brand is going to be destroyed. Okay, so to give some backstory, like I said, I'm not a dirty person. I I just got curry and I was sitting down for lunch and then we decided to film and I, I was going to eat curry afterwards. So I just want to throw that out there. Austin is really dirty, actually. I'm not Don't a dirty believe person. him. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. No, have you noticed like how how a lot of Japanese people when they sweat they don't smell? No, it, it's not the Japanese. That's that's a that's a gene that uh, people in Asia have. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, because my coworker, uh, she's Chinese. She has that. It drives me insane. Yeah. Because like the other day, it was like I don't know, like 37 yeah, or right. something outside. Super hot. Right. It was really hot, and so like 37's like somewhere in the 90s. In Fahrenheit, right? Yeah, right. And it was like, you know, 100% humidity, just terrible yeah. to exist in. And me, I am a profuse sweater. Yeah. I, I sweat and then it like it looks like I just got out of a bath. Yeah, right. Right. Uh, and me, it's like, you know, like they the deodorant in this country is like really weak. Yeah, it doesn't cause, work. Because they don't use... Um, Aluminum? Is that what it is? I don't know. That's part of it. I mean, that's for antiperspirants. Yeah, well, so yeah. yeah, so it must be that because they okay. don't do the antiperspirants. Yeah. And so what happens is like you'll put deodorant on, you'll smell okay for like 30 minutes. Yeah. And then it just goes away. Yeah. Right. And uh, so like me, I'm like sweating and I'm stinky and yeah. it's like, God, this sucks. Yeah. And I look over at my coworker and she's just like, fine. Yeah, right. Just because 
because near the end of the day, especially here, yeah. you you are aware of how much you smell. Everybody smells. Well, except yeah. for the people that like don't have that gene. Yeah, I know. But like me, yeah. I'm consciously aware yeah. of how much I smell, yeah. you know? Yeah. And like it was so funny because my wife yesterday, because I I'm wearing like these um these areas I'm really oh really cool God. You're like stinky polo shirts. Greek man. I am a stinky Greek <laughs> man. No, but she she <laughs> last night she's like Arthur. No offense, but did you notice how your shirt smelled less this morning? And I was like, yes, I did actually, because I was like, oh, this smells kind of fresh. She's like, yeah, I used an extra strong like detergent so that it gets the smell out for you. I was like, thank you. Oh, bless her. <laughs> yeah, because seriously, man, like it's it's deadly, man. Poor Yui hasn't even said anything. I know. She's I, too I feel nice, like, man. Yeah, I feel like she's just too nice. Yeah. She's yeah. probably like, God damn it. Why did I marry such a stinky guy? I know, I know. In the, in the winter, it's okay because you're nice and warm. You can yeah. be like the heating for the house. But, yeah. but in the summer, it's deadly. Yeah. So how do we get on this topic from stationery and handwriting? I don't know. Let's, let's go back again a little bit more to stationery. Like what's another like thing that you've noticed with stationery here? Um... Oh, pen cases, man. Yeah. Like, pen case culture is, like, pretty insane over here. Because, like, Big time. you know, I mean, you'll have, like, pen cases and stuff, like, in the U.S., right? Mm -hmm. But, like, and maybe this might be just because I'm a guy. So, yeah. I, th I think women tend to favor, like, pen case accessories a little mm -hmm. bit more than men. Can't imagine why. Yeah. Um, But, uh, yeah, so, I like, I remember when I was in school, like, I had a pen case and it's, like, mm -hmm. You had some pens in there, you had a couple pencils, maybe mm -hmm. like a little like like short ruler and mm -hmm. you know like an eraser, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, here it's like, man, I mean, if you open up a student's pen case here, they have like thirty pens, yeah, uh, and pencils. Mm -hmm. They'll have like four or five different colors of highlighter. Mm -hmm. Um, of course they'll have the ruler, they'll have that like math compass mm -hmm. thing, like yeah. the thing that like you've always played with but never used in yeah, class. Right, right. Um and then like the outside of the pen case will be like like these plushy dolls. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, they attach most, to them. Um, well, no, no, no. I'm not I'm like they're not even attachments, like the pen case itself is okay. a doll. Okay. Like that's something you see all the time here, and it's like boys boys will have them too. Yeah. And it'll be like these these characters from TV shows. Mm -hmm. And it's like those characters are the pen case. You okay. see that all the time here. Yeah. It's crazy. Like even high school students, you see it. You know, it's funny. Now that, you, so as you're mentioning this, I'm getting really nostalgic for Germany because my sister had a pen case when she went to German school that was really like that, except it had unicorns on it. Oh, really? But she did have all the highlighters. She had a yeah. ton of pens in it and it was all organized. She had like yeah. three different erasers, whatever. Yeah. And then now that you, now that you, say it you know when i moved to the states you didn't really have any of that mm. you know like of course you have like a pen case that you'll put some pens in but nothing like as elaborate as you're saying yeah right? yeah yeah and it's just it's just crazy like the amount of the amount of stuff that gets crammed in those pen cases and it's like yeah just how much students bring around yeah i feel like you know so so i feel like in i mean so in japan the diy movement is is getting stronger mm. here like do it yourself like fix your house or whatever yeah um and people paint their house and stuff like that. But yeah, um, I feel like in Japan there's more of like a, more of a craft culture mm. than in the states. You know, like stationery and yeah, putting together photo albums and stuff oh, like that. Oh, definitely. Like you know, scrapbooking is like intense. Oh, yeah, scrapbooking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And so I guess like it goes back to that whole, um, you know, creating something. Mm. You know, something beautiful, something nice, handmade yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, and. It, it it kind of makes me think of like what we talked about in nature. You know, you talked mm. about how in America, like the nature is so overwhelming, whereas like in Japan, it's much more small and you have to pay attention to it, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like the same thing. You have all these little dainty little things like yeah. in the scrapbook, you'll put a little bit of ribbon just because it looks nice. Yeah. Or you'll put that on your letter somehow and you'll yeah. do a little doodle or something like that. Yeah. And it's like, I can't remember the last time I ever saw something like that yeah. in the States. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Man. So for you, if you had to go get stationery, where would you go? Like here? Yeah, in Japan. Oh, Daiso. You go to Daiso? I'd go to Daiso. Cheap jerk. Okay, Mr. Expensive Stationery Man, where would you go? <laughs> I would go to Loft. Oh, God. What? Oh, my God. <laughs> what? Okay, so I'm sure many of you, well, I if, if you're in Japan, you know Loft exists. But Loft is like, Loft, I, I would say Loft is like a Seattle store. 
Okay. Yeah. It's it's a very yuppie like, <laughs> would you like this pen? By the way, it's fifteen dollars for this state of the art ergonomic pen. I do have a fifty dollar pen actually. So <laughs> But I, I bought it in the States. I bought it in the States though. So I don't know. You know, something about Loft like it just I they have like more of a variety of different types of things. Whereas like if I wanted to get something simple I would go to Daiso. Stop giving me that look. More of a variety, he says. It's the same thing. It just costs four times as much. No. He just wants to flex. I can afford this. No. No, okay, okay, okay. (laughs) So if I were to get basic stationery, like the little the little slips of like rectangles like that my um host mom gave me. Yeah, I'd probably go to Daiso for that. It's super simple. But if I wanted to get something more special. Like an ergonomic pen. Like an ergonomic pen. No. Like <laughs> just something really unique, then I would go to Loft. I feel like a Loft just feels special to me. There's a Loft in Musashi Kosugi, actually. Ar- Arthur's so. Arthur's gonna get his 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 little slip of paper and then bring out like the ink and his quill pen, dip it in the ink and dearest madam. <laughs> so so in in all honesty, my pen of choice is a fountain pen. Oh my <laughs> Man, I'm on point with all yeah, these colors. I, I don't have an inkwell because it has like the cartridge in it. Actually, <laughs> I had to go home and get new cartridges because I don't have any more cartridges here for it. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, I will say though, fountain pens are really cool. Yeah. Like I, I, uh, I spend a lot of time on the train watching like YouTube mm-hmm. shorts mm-hmm. and there's this one channel that I follow that's like a fountain pen enthusiast mm-hmm. channel. Really? Yeah. As dumb think- as that is, um, but like the, the all the wow. videos are just like, here's how I load up this pen, and it's just like, it's so cool. Oh, so so it's like showing you how he uses the pen and stuff. Yeah, he'll he'll like do drawings with it, but like also some of the shorts that he does mm. is uh, him loading up the pen because okay. he's got to use a syringe for it. Okay, and it's just it, I don't know, it's really cool to watch. Actually, I, I want to show me show me yeah. that afterwards. Yeah, yeah, you know it's. It's funny though that you mentioned that because I am, um, so I wanted to get a fountain pen because I didn't want to throw away pens every time I ran out of ink, yeah. you know, and I don't have those ones with like the refillable cartridges in them mm. or whatever, but um, what was I going to say? The thing I like about a fountain pen though is that you can adjust the texture of the line really easily yeah. on it. Yeah. And what's, what's also kind of funny, I didn't realize this until after I bought one. Because the fountain pen would be the only pen that I'd have on me. So when mm-hmm. someone would be like, hey, do you have a pen? I'd give it to them. They wouldn't know how to use it. Yeah. And they would you, try to you, use it. And they can't write well. Yeah. You can't just like whip out a pen or a fountain pen and just be like, start writing. Because yeah. you, you got to hold it a certain way in yeah. order to get the ink onto the paper. Speaking of which about yeah. pens, have you noticed how there are so many more fine tip pens here than in the States? Oh, yeah. Actually, so that I noticed that back in high school. Yeah. Because... Um, I don't know when mechanical pencils became popular, but I know there was a very distinct period when I was in junior high that everyone had number two pencils, yeah. and then like the next year we had like gel pens and mechanical pencils. Yeah, right. Gel you know? pens, man. Wow. And it was so crazy because like the number two pencil, like there, it's a big thick pencil, mm-hmm. right? But then we would get these mechanical pencils that were like point five millimeter. Mm-hmm. And it would say Japan on the side of them. Yeah. And when you go here, it's like, you don't even see really big, thick pencils here. Yeah. That they're all like really fine pencils. Mm-hmm. And it's the same with pens. They're like mm-hmm. really fine, like 0. 0.5, 0. 0.7 millimeter yeah. uh, pens. Why do you think it is that here, there are so many more fine tip pens and pencils compared to the States? If I had to guess, mm-hmm. I would say it's because the paper that's generally used for writing here is B5 paper. So, like, Amer- to give you a context, uh, America, the standardized paper that Americans use, mm-hmm. and I think Europe also, mm-hmm. is the A4 paper. A4 paper, yeah. Right? That's the, what's it, 6 by 11 yeah. uh, inch paper. And B5 is like... um. I would say 40% the size of that. Yeah. Right? So it's a smaller paper. Mm -hmm. um, And that's the standard paper that Mm -hmm. you use uh, as a student. Yeah. So it would make sense that they would want a smaller pen to go Mm -hmm. along with that so they can still Mm -hmm. fit like a similar word count onto Mm -hmm. the paper. 
Yeah. That would be my guess. I don't know if that's true, though. Yeah, I mean, that definitely could be part of it. I was thinking it it would be because, you know, people have to write kanji, whereas we just write letters, and kanji are much more intricate than I letters, see so that you have too. to write in a smaller space. Yeah. I mean, it could be both. Yeah. But speaking of what, when you're mentioning bef- before, you know, I never knew paper sizes until I came here. Same here, man. I yeah. was just like, oh, or I think it's 8 by 11. Yeah. Uh, by 11, it's yeah. like, oh, yeah, you just use the 8 by 11 paper. And then I came here and I was like, what the hell is B5? Yeah. A4? Like, yeah. Is that the same? But this is the same. Why are you calling it A4? And they're like, yeah. no, we want A5. What's the difference? Yeah. And it's weird. No, 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 no. Today we're going to be using like B2, no, yeah. B3. And I'm like, what's that? Yeah. You know? And it's it's funny how it's like that's something that's like common sense knowledge that yeah. you get here. You know, I will say though, I've gotten pretty damn good at using a printer here. Yeah. Um. So when I first moved over here, <laughs> you could actually you can measure how long an English teacher has been here based off of how they print their assignments. Yeah. Right. When I first moved over here, everything was A4 stapled. Yeah. Right. Stapled. Right. Big word. And then I uh, I graduated into b5 mm-hmm. but we still stapled yeah and then i graduated into b4 yeah so to fold it so yeah so for those of you who don't understand what b4 is b4 is literally just two b5 yeah. papers together yeah so the way that the like a and the b paper sizes go is that a and b are both like these huge sheets of paper they're different sizes which is why one's a and why one's b mm. and every number you go up it gets half the size yeah. so b2 is half the size of b1 yeah b3 is half the size of b2 yeah b4 is half the size of b3 yeah and so um so that was my next evolution yeah now i've graduated from that though what do you do because now i print out booklets man booklets yeah so there's a printer there's a printer option that mm-hmm. if you if you print out b5 papers mm-hmm. it'll print out these double-sided b4 papers mm-hmm. that'll like match the pages up okay and so when it prints out you just fold it in yeah now you have a booklet yeah i look i, I look slick yeah in my classes all the teachers are like damn your exams look really good. Yeah, right. You just open it up and it's like a book and it's just like, it no. looks so official. I'm like, you're damn right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's so true because I remember yeah. coming here thinking about like all of these, all of these, war- like all these handouts that they would yeah. give in class. They're on these massive sheets of paper, mm. but they're folded so mm-hmm. that they're like the right size, right? Yeah. But it's like, why, why does this happen? It's yeah. just a different culture. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's just more effort put in because, like, yeah. dude, I remember back when I was in, you know, high school. I mean, even college, like, your professors or your teachers to hand out stuff. It's like, there's, whoa, that was way louder. <laughs> I thought it was because of your ring of power. It was power. your ring of power. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just slap it on the table. It's like, there's the paper. There, it's a thing. Take the, it. The paper's right there. Yeah, the and papers get mixed like, up sometimes. And that's it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, and it's just like when I think back on it, it's like. You know, it doesn't really matter, but it's like, man, that was ugly. Yeah. You could have put some effort and like made it a little bit nicer. That and- yeah. Yeah. You know, it also, that kind of reminds me of, of like when I first moved here and this is another food related thing about c- cooking and stuff. Mm. I needed to find flour mm. and I didn't know what flour to get because in America you have all purpose flour. Yeah. You just buy the flour. It's like, what do you I mean know. different types of flour? No, Whereas you just it, buy the flour. It, it's so funny because I was like, yeah. I need I need flour. And they're like, okay, use this one. I'm like, I want to make bread though. This this doesn't work well for bread. They're like, oh, then use the kyori kiko. It's like, what's that? Uh, it's a strong flour. I'm like, what? Like, why? Because like, because basically all the flour in America is chiori kiko. It's the middle one. Yeah. You know, and that's the flour they use the whole time. But in Japan, you can't get that. You have to mix... The, the heavy with the, the heavy light. with the light, yeah. And you know they each have their own different uses. They'll even t- they'll even have pictures of what you can make with it on yeah. the label, so that you can see. Oh yeah, with <laughs> with hakuriko, you can you make this kind of stuff. And it's like, yeah. what? Yeah, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So man, we t- we t- we ended up talking about a lot of stuff. Paper, yeah, I, and stuff. I, that I was kind of excited to talk about this so- yeah. subject because it's not really something we've really mentioned on the channel before. Yeah, and it's it's one of those things that like I don't really think it's advertised in Japan. Mm-hmm. Like no one's ever like, bro, when you go to Japan, you're gonna look at the stationery and it's gonna be so cool. Yeah, you know, it's like no, no, no. They're talking about like shrines and temples and yeah. like food and all the other stuff that like yeah. Japan's famous for. But when you go over here, it's like especially if you're working over here 
you're gonna you're just gonna be like, yo, I need office supplies one day, and you're gonna go in and you're just gonna be like, what, what the what hell is this? Like, there's too many options. Yeah, what do yeah, I go yeah. For? So it's it's just like one of those things that's fun, and you can actually encounter this in the U.S. if you go into Daiso because the yeah. Daiso in the U.S. looks very similar to the one here or the loft. Oh wait, there's no loft in America. Oh, dude, they got. I mean, uh, was it not Bed Bath and Beyond? They got stores that are like the loft. Are you talking about like Brookstone? Um, is that the one that sells like the stuff that you see on like the TV ad commercials? That you don't really need, but yeah, if you have yeah, extra yeah. money, you buy it. Yeah, that's, Dude, that's Brookstone. loft. Yeah, that, that is, is loft. 100% loft. I was right going right to say loft is like Brookstone. Yeah. 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 I remember one of my friends that had like, um, he had a, his, um, his father passed and he got a huge inheritance of like over a million dollars. Yeah. And like he would go to Brookstone every week and buy something new. And when I come to see him, like, what is that? Oh, this is just like a neck massage that I got from Brookstone. How much was it? Four hundred bucks. This is this is like a a, a heated vacuum machine that yeah. uh, you know will warm and massage your hand while you're vacuuming. Yeah, basically, it's like, like this useless, is the most useless stuff. shit ever. It's like yeah. who cares? You're freaking vacuuming. Yeah. You don't need a hand massage. Or like you know, they, like they had like stuff. speakers that will float in your pool or something. <laughs> Although, okay, you, you mentioned that. My, my, when I went to visit my sister, yeah, uh, she's got a pool and we were out in the pool. And uh, she's got this floaty that's yeah. like, uh, like a snack tray okay. slash drink holder. Okay. And dude, it is the most amazing thing ever, especially when she put it in the hot tub. Yeah. And we're just chilling in the hot tub and there's like these chips and like um, uh, guacamole dip like okay. right in the center of the hot tub. And, oh, God, it was so good. Dude. I, I feel like Brookstone is made for people like your sister. I'm yeah, not at I, that I level. Can't that Chelsea but... likes the fancy stuff. Yeah, so does Carrie too. Yeah, but cool. Well, I think we've we've talked about as much as we can. Yeah. So we yeah. still have a little bit more for the next episode. So yeah. I'll see you next time. Wait, well, let's, wait, let's let finish me, this. Let, all right, let's let, finish. Let me this. do the drink. Are you going to finish that? We're done. All right, saigo mai gorai itadaki makoto ni arigatou gozaimasu. 忘れないでください。英語は勉強するための科目ではなく、世界の人々とつながるための具体的にどうしたらその問題が解決できるんでしょうね。僕も日本語を勉強して主催者の4年間はこういう問題があったんですが、いろんな気づきがあって実際に話せるようになったんですね。で、僕だけではなくもう数百人の生徒も同じように話